Hey gang, Jane back today with a new granny square. This one is a larger square and I call her Sage. This one started as a simple six petaled flower and then I decided to add a round to straighten the sides out and make it into an actual hexagon shape. Then I decided to challenge myself to see if I could add another round or two and turn it into a square. It took some trial and error as six corners don't work the same as four corners, but in the end, we have success. I've also added a fun border onto the square. This is a simple border stitch that I use a lot to trim my blankets as well and it's easy to work onto any square to give it a nice finish. So I'll be showing you that as an added little bonus at the end of this tutorial. I'd suggest this square is about an advanced beginner level simply because of the two squaring rounds. However, you guys have given me great feedback on liking when I work through lots of repeats and even when I work through the entire rounds with you. So this tutorial will be a bit longer as I'll be working multiple repeats for many of the rounds and on the two squaring rounds themselves, I'll be working those entire rounds with you. Hopefully this will make this square a little easier and one that new crocheters will give it a go. My goal is to inspire you guys to go a little further and try those beautiful squares and projects that you've been admiring. Also remember, I do offer the free patterns for all my squares in written form. You can follow along with those on my blog. And I also offer the PDF versions of my squares with charts for purchase in my shop on my website as well, if you're looking for a printable version. This square has eight rounds up to and including the squaring off section, and you could use the square with just those eight rounds. But I like to add additional rounds to the border and give it a nice finish as well as make it a bit bigger. So the final square ends up with 15 rounds in all. The eight round size works out to eight inches square and the larger 15 round version comes out to about 11 and a half inches squared. You can play around with the color order and the number of colors to create different looks to this square. Mix and match according to your own home decor color style and use it as a trivet or a placemat. Or try using only two colors and see how stunning that can be as well. I'll be using a worsted weight yarn in four different colors today. You guys like to know my yarn choices, so here you go. The light green is laurel, which is impeccable by loops and threads. The bright green is lettuce by Red Heart with Love. The white is parchment, also Burnett Premium. And the pink color is called rose, and that is again Burnett Premium. I'll also be using a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. Other tools you'll need are a pair of scissors and a darning needle to work in your ends. You can find more information on the pattern for the Sage Granny Square over on my blog. And again, I'll leave the link in the description below. So gather your supplies and your favorite colors, and let's jump in to today's square. Starting with our magic ring, laying our yarn over our palm, holding it in place with our thumb, wrapping around our first two fingers, back underneath, crossing over, and around our three fingers. We have the two wraps here, the hook goes underneath the first and over the second, pulling it through, twisting it onto the hook, go back up and grab the yarn over the third finger and pull through your first chain one. Now we have our magic ring locked in place with our first chain one. Moving on to round number one, we want to start with a chain three. So I need two more chains to make that first chain three. This counts as our first double crochet. I now need to make 11 more double crochets into this magic ring for our first round. So yarn around the hook, insert into the magic ring, yarn over again and pull up a loop. Yarn over the hook, pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the second two. That's our double crochet and now we have what counts as two double crochet. I need 10 more into this loop. So let's make 10 double crochet to, to com complete our round one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I need 12 total, so I need five more. And I hold on anywhere around here because I don't want to pull out this loop yet. So just kind of use your thumb and your finger to hold on to that whole area while we work into the magic ring, keeping your tension the same. So I need three more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
And this should be my last one. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now I want to pull up my magic ring. So I grab this cut end and I place my thumb and my finger at the base right here. So I'm going to use this thumb and this finger right here. And I'm going to pull on this and it cinches up the ring. And I usually have to adjust it a little and pull a little bit more. You can always cinch that up tighter when you go to darn this end in. So we've closed up the hole and now we want to join our round. I like to do invisible rounds on my first ones when they're double crochets. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn. Pull it through. And then I'm just going to work an invisible join by putting my yarn onto my darning needle. I'm going to go and I'm going to imitate a stitch over top of this chain three. So I'm not adding any stitches. I go under the second double crochet. So the second stitch, the first actual double crochet. And I pull through and I come back and put it into the stitch it just came out of. And it creates that nice pretend stitch over top of the chain three. And that completes my first round. So round number one, I used this color called Laurel. It's a pale green. And now I want to use this color called Lettuce, which is a brighter green. So round number two starts with, it can start with a chain three or a standing double crochet. So I'm going to show you the standing double crochet, which I do have an individual tutorial for if you want to see it nice and slow and in detail. But you hold your piece in front of your yarn and you take your hook and you wrap the yarn twice around the hook. Then you want to work into one of the stitches, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I still have my end being held at the back here. Work through the first two stitches and then through the next two stitches to create a double crochet. I still have this loose end. That's my first double crochet. In this particular pattern, I need to work another double crochet into the same stitch. And I'm going to do it by working this end in as well. So what I do when I go under for the yarn for the double crochet, I actually am going to go through both of those. So the cut end and the working yarn are both around the hook. Then I go into the same stitch that I was just in and I can work that yarn in if I want as well there. So yarn over again and pull up a loop. So it seems a little chunky here, but I'm just working that end into this stitch to secure it. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I have two double crochet in my first stitch. That's what I'm going to do all the way around for round number two two double crochet in every stitch. So I'll end up with 24 double crochet. So again, let's work a few of those. So that's a double crochet into the next stitch and another double crochet into that same stitch. So I'm doubling my number of stitches, still working double crochets. See how I'm working two into each stitch. Now work two double crochet into every stitch and you'll end up with 24 double crochet and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to join it and fasten off. Here we are back at the end of the round. I have 24 double crochet and I want to fasten off. I'm going to do another invisible join at the end of this round. So cutting my yarn about three to four inches, pull it through, put it on my darning needle. And this is my standing double crochet right there. I'm going to work it over top of that. So going into the next stitch under both loops, pull it through gently, put it back in where it came out of gently. And I imitated a stitch right over top. And now I've joined that round. So that's the end of round number two.
When I do this, I do work my ends in as I go. I get a lot of people ask why I don't do it in the tutorials. When I have a, a square like this that is going to get a little more complicated when it gets to the later rounds, I don't like to confuse people by having even more stuff going on. So I tend to leave the ends hanging just so I can focus on the stitches because it's a lot to look at when you're just learning the square itself. But I do have some tutorials that I'm working on where I'm going to be working the ends in for the entire square. I'll start with some simpler squares so that you can see how I do it. Because once you get the hang of it, you, it becomes a point where you just can't leave the end hanging there. You're just so used to working them in. Moving on to round number three, I'm going to use this parchment. You can join it in any stitch that you want, and it's going to be a single crochet join. And again, I'm going to do a standing single crochet. So I wrap the yarn around the hook first, always holding it with this finger at the back so the end doesn't fly away on me. Put it into any stitch you want to. And in this case, I will be working over the cut end to secure it in place. And go ahead and complete your single crochet. So that's our first single crochet. Then I'm going to chain three. We skip the next stitch and work into the next one. So a single crochet again. And that is what we'll do all the way around. So let's do it again. Chain three, skip over the next stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. That's your repeat. One more time, chain three, skip your next stitch and single crochet in your next stitch. And that's all there is to this round. Chain three, skip over a stitch and single crochet in the next one. Go ahead and finish that. I'll meet you back here at the end of the round. You will have 12 single crochets and 12 chain three spaces. Back at the end of the round with my 12 single crochets and 12 chain three spaces, I'm ready to join. And in this time, I'm just gonna slip stitch. Usually whenever I end with any kind of a chain stitch, I just do a slip stitch. It's just as neat as if I were to do an invisible one. Put my hook through that first single crochet and pull a loop through. And I've joined it with a slip stitch. So again, changing my color, I'm going to cut my yarn and pull it through. And there you have the first three rounds. So these are nice and easy three rounds. I love the beginning of this. It's pretty simple to work with. Now we're going to move into more of the flower shape or the star shape. Here's what we've done so far. We have our center right here. So we've done this round, this round, and this round. And we are now moving into these petals. So if I would put that on top, you would see the next round will be in this rose color. And we're going to be working petals. And then from there, we're just going to border the petals for two more rounds before we get into the squaring off. This part's not bad. This part is the easiest part. Then this part, you know, it just takes a little more thought process. And then this part, we're really going to get into the good stuff because squaring a six sided shape isn't as simple as you think it is. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And you'll learn some new techniques there. We want to start our next round, round four, with a single crochet in any one of these chain three spaces. So I will do my standing single crochet and a chain one. The next chain three space, we're going to work a full petal into. And our petals consist of three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. Let's put three double crochet to start our first half of our first petal, chain two, then three double crochet for the second half of our petal. So they're separate double crochets. And our petal is now finished with three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and it creates this beautiful little petal because it's all worked into the same space. Chain one and work a single crochet into the next chain three space. That's your repeat right there. Pedal, chain one, single crochet, chain one. Now we want to work another pedal. Three double crochet. Chain two. 
chain two, three double crochet, same chain three space. We're going to have, oh, I get carried away and then everything falls off my hook. So we have, that's two, I need one more, and a chain one, single crochet in the next chain three space, chain one. We're going to have six of these all together, so we've done two. I need to do four more. I'll do one more with you and then leave you to finish the last on your own. Three double crochet in the next chain three space, chain two for the top of our petal, three double crochet into the same chain three space. To complete the second half of our petal, chain one, single crochet in the next chain three space, and a chain one. We now have three of our petals done. We need three more petals. I'll meet you back here just before we get to this single crochet and we'll finish off the round. I've worked my six petals and I've ended with this last petal and a chain one. Now I haven't done a single crochet because that's where we started. So the last petal and a chain one is where you'll end. Then you'll do a slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we worked and that will fasten off our round, cut your yarn because we're changing colors again, and pull it through. Now we have our six-sided shape. The next two rounds will be just a border to the petals, and we're going to do it in the two different colors of green. So at this point, you have six petals that each have six double crochets. So six times six, you have 36 double crochets. You have six chain two spaces, six single crochets, and because you have a chain space on either side of the single crochet, that makes six times two, which is 12. So 12 chain one spaces, and that's what you should have to end this round. So the next round, we're going to bring in this light green that's called Laurel. That's what I have right here in the center, and we're going to do a border all the way around this pink. We want to join in any one of these chain two spaces. So I'm just going to pick this one right here. And I want it to be a single crochet, so I do my standing single crochet. This will be the first half of the corner. We'll finish it when we come around at the end. Moving into the stitches now, we want to work a single crochet into each of these double crochets. So three of those. So we have the first single crochet we started with in the chain two space, and then we have a single crochet in each of the double crochets a single crochet in the chain one space right here, and a single crochet in the chain space on the other side. So we are skipping over the single crochet in the middle and working only in the chain spaces on either side of it. Now working a single crochet in each of the double crochets going back up to the corner. So those three right there. And when we reach the corner, we're going to do a full corner, which is single crochet into the chain two space, chain two, and single crochet into the chain two space again. Now we've completed one side of our six sided figure. So we worked a single crochet into each of the double crochets and the chain spaces, but we skipped over the single crochet in the middle. Let's work down the next side, same way. Coming off of our corner, we want to do a single crochet in each of the next three double crochets. Single crochet in the chain one space, skip the single crochet, and a single crochet in the next chain one space. Single crochet in each of the next three double crochets, and we're back to our corner. So that side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight single crochets in between the two corners because the corners have single crochet, chain two, single crochet in them. Then you have the eight single crochet, then another corner. The corner is in the chain two space, 
single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And now we've worked our second edge. Let's work down one more edge. Then I'll let you go ahead and finish it on your own. Single crochet in each of the next three double crochets. A single crochet in the chain one space. Skip over the single crochet itself and single crochet in the next chain one space. Single crochet in each of the next three double crochet. And you're back to the corner. So we worked eight single crochet back to the corner is a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Now we've worked three of our edges and you have three edges left. You're going to come right back up to this corner here and then I'll meet you here to finish this corner before we fasten off. We've worked around all six edges now and we've come back to where we started. I have done the eight single crochet and I'm back to the corner. I want to work a single crochet in the same chain two space that we joined in. Chain two and now I'm going to do a slip stitch join in that first single crochet to complete that corner and to complete the entire round. Then I'm going to cut my yarn because I'm joining another color and pull it through. So at the end of this round, we have 60 single crochets and six chain two spaces. And that is all. To start the next round, I want to take my lettuce color, which is this deeper green right here. And I'm going to join it in any one of these chain two corners. So again, a standing single crochet into any one of those chain two spaces. That's the first part of the corner, which we will complete when we come back to the end. We now do single crochets in each of the single crochets working down. We want to do four of these. We want to go into the first stitch, which is actually the single crochet that worked into the corner from the round below. That's our first one. Then we go into the second one beside it, the third one, and the fourth one. At this point, we come to the single crochets that were worked into the chain spaces. I'm going to work those two together. So this is a single crochet decrease. So go into the first one and pull up a loop and go into the next one and pull up a loop. So you have three loops on the hook, yarn around and pull through. That's a single crochet decrease right at the center. Now we're going to work four single crochets up the next side. One in each single crochet stitch from the round before. And it takes us to the next corner that we're going to work a normal corner, single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. And that's one full side. Let's work another one. So from the corner, we are now going to work four single crochet down this edge, one into each single crochet along this edge. That's three. And that's four. Then we want to work a single crochet decrease over the next two stitches. So pull up a loop and then go into the next one and pull up a loop and then pull through all three loops. Single crochet decrease. Now work four single crochet up the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four and we're back to the corner. In this chain two corner we work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. We've now done two edges and see how it just adds an extra border to the, the lighter green that we have there. So let's go one more time and then I'll leave you to work the rest on your own. From our corner that we just completed, we'll now work four single crochet down this edge. That's three and that's four. A single crochet decrease over these center two stitches. So pulling up a loop in each one and then pull through all three loops. And now four single crochet up the next edge. One, two, three, and four, we've made it to the next corner and our corner is single crochet in the chain two space, 
chain two and a single crochet in the same space. We've now worked three of our edges. See how they come, kind of come up and down around the points. And we're ready to do three more. So I'm going to let you go ahead and do exactly what we've been doing here around the next edges. And I'll meet you back here where we started to finish off the round. We've completed all six of our edges here on our six pointed star. And now I'm back to where we started. We want to complete this corner by working a single crochet into the same chain two space that we joined in. Chain two and then slip stitch in that first single crochet. And then we're going to fasten off our yarn. So cut the yarn, pull it through. Now we're ready to square out our star. So let's take a look at where we're going next. So here's the one that we've worked on and this is how far we've come. So it's equivalent to right around the same area right here. Now we're going to work on this white part and this is actually two rounds. The first round is going to straighten out these edges around the star so you end up with an actual hexagon and then this last round is going to square out the hexagon. The struggle with squaring out a hexagon is the star shape itself is not a square. It's longer than it is wide. So you have it widthwise here is not the same as the point to point here. Point to point is the same all the way around, but there's no points here. You actually have, you're actually on the end points. If you were to measure from the point to the next point is just a little over six inches. This is a six inch ruler, not quite long enough, but you get the idea. Just a little over six inches. And then across, even if I were to go from this point to this point, because those are the, that would be the widest edge, uh, you're under six inches. So it's not a perfect square. So your square points end up in weird places compared to the six pointed star. So the next round, we're going to do a hexagon shape. So we're going to straighten out these edges. And then on the round after that, we're going to square it out. I have the parchment and we're ready for our next round. Now this round, we really have to pay attention to where we're working. So I will walk you through the entire round so that you have it really clear in your mind where you're supposed to be working. So we're going to take our parchment and we're going to join close to a corner. We are not working into these chain two spaces on this round. That can get confusing, but I want to leave them unworked so that we can get this nice hexagon shape to round out. So what you're going to actually do is work into the first single crochet not the chain two space. I'm going to work a standing single crochet to begin and you work into the first single crochet next to the chain two space. So let's zoom in and take a look at that to see exactly where I started. The chain two space is right there, but I'm working into the first single crochet, not the chain two. So there is a difference there. We are not working this chain two space. It's going to remain unworked. We have our first single crochet and we're going to move on and we're going to work a half double crochet into the next stitch. So half double crochet has the three, just like a double crochet would, except you go through all three. Yarn around half double crochet in the next stitch. And a double crochet in the next stitch. So just to recap that, we started with a single crochet, then we did a half double crochet, another half double crochet, and then a double crochet, one into each stitch. Now we're going to work a double crochet decrease, but we're going to do a double double crochet decrease. So we want to decrease two stitches using the double crochet. So you actually want to go over the next three stitches because you want to make the next three stitches into one stitch. So let's work through this. Yarn around the hook, insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. We're not completing this stitch because we're going to continue with our decrease. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two, leave the remaining three loops on the hook, 
One more time, we're going to do yarn around, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop. You'll now have five loops on the hook, yarn around, pull through two. You have four remaining loops on the hook. You're going to do a yarn over and pull through all four loops. You've now decreased two stitches and you've made the next three stitches into one. So that's across the center. And now we're going to work our way back up to the next point. So the first stitch will be a double crochet stitch. Next stitch will be a half double crochet. Oops. Another half double crochet in the next stitch. And we'll finish off with a single crochet just before you hit the corner. Now let's take a look at what we've done. We have taken this dip in between the petals and we have leveled it off by making short stitches into long stitches, working the center together, and then long stitches to short stitches. This makes this edge now a perfect straight line. A little hard to see on the white there, but you can see it there. So we now have straightened out our first edge and that's the repeat. So we do a chain two at the end of that to stretch across our corner. We are not again working into this chain two at all. We're leaving it unworked. So this chain two will lie across this chain two so that we can get to the next stitch. So going into the first single crochet after the chain two stitch, you don't want to work that chain two, work a single crochet. So there you can see we've stretched across the corner without working it. Now we're going to work our way down this next dip and back up exactly how we did here. And like I said, I'm going to work your way all the way around. So if you understand how to do this, you can go ahead and do it, but I am going to work all the way around so you can work it with me. The next stitch we want a half double crochet and then another half double crochet and then a double crochet. Now we've reached where we want to decrease over the next three stitches. We want to work this double crochet decrease. Yarn around the hook, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two leave the remaining two unworked. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, leaving the remaining three stitches unworked. Yarn over one more time, insert into the next stitch and pull up a loop. We will have five loops on the hook, so yarn over, pull through the first two, and you have four remaining loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all four loops. Use your thumb and your finger to pull them down so you have a little bit of space. You've now completed a double crochet decrease over the next three stitches. So you've decreased two stitches. Now we want to work our way up to the next point. Double crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next. Half double crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in that last stitch, chain two. And there you can see we have worked another edge. So you have two so far and they are straightened out. And everything is identical. This is what you're doing right in here. This is the repeat. Again, this chain two is going to stretch across the chain two that we are not going to be working into. And you work into the single crochet on the other side of that chain two. Now let's continue to work and I'm going to call out as I'm working, but we're going to start to move a little faster because as I said, I'm going to work it all the way with you and I don't want to drag it out too far. So I will just call the stitches as I work them. So we start with our single crochet we just did. Now I want to do a half double crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, double crochet decrease over next three stitches. So I won't explain it this time. I'll just work it slowly so you can see it. A little faster than I worked it before, but you'll see the flow of it. 
there we have these three stitches are going to be all turned into one. Yarn around and pull through all those loops. Now we work our way back up, double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet. There we have our third edge worked. Chain two, single crochet in the first stitch after the chain two, half double crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, double crochet decrease over the next three stitches. And again, I'll just work it and you can watch always leaving the last part of the stitch on the hook that we can work them all together at once. All four of those loops now will be worked as one. Double crochet back up the other side, half double crochet, half double crochet, and single crochet. We have four edges worked. Chain two, single crochet on the other side of the corner, half double crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Now we want to work the next three stitches together. Partial do double crochet in that first one partial double crochet in the second one and a partial double crochet in the third one and then we work them all together. Double crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet, half double crochet and a single crochet in the last one. Almost there, five of our edges are now straightened out. One more to go. Chain two to go to work over top of the chain two that's already there. Single crochet in that first stitch on the other side of the chain two. Half double crochet in the next one. Half double crochet in the next one. And a double crochet and now we work a double crochet decrease over the next three stitches. So that dip kind of pulls into one. Partial double crochet in the first stitch, two loops on the hook. Partial double crochet in the next stitch, three loops on the hook. And partial double crochet in the last of the three stitches, four loops yarn around and pull through all four. Double crochet in the next stitch, up our last edge here, half double crochet, half double crochet, and a single crochet. Chain two, and that takes us right back to where we started. You want a slip stitch in that first single crochet and that will end the round. And you do not want to cut your yarn at this point because we are going to continue with this color, so do not cut it. So you can see here that we have straightened out the edges. So we now have an actual hexagon that we can square off. So it almost makes a nice circle and we want to work a square around this circle. So we're ready to begin round number eight and this will be our squaring off round and we are continuing with the same color that we used before. We want to do a single crochet in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. That's our first single crochet. We want to work three more single crochets, one in each of these stitches. Then a single crochet into this stitch, which was the decreasing stitch and single crochet in each of the next four. So really you want to be single crocheting nine stitches across. So let's take a look at this, what we've done here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. 
So nine single crochets across that straight edge. Now the next stitch is a little tricky, but what we're going to do is a half double crochet into this unworked chain two space from two rounds before. So if you remember in the last round, we did a chain two across it, but we did not work into it. Now we're going to work into it. So you're actually working over the previous round and into the round before that. And we want to do a half double crochet. So wrap the yarn around, insert the hook into the green round, into that chain two space, and complete a half double crochet by pulling your yarn up a little because you're going to have, you don't want it to bunch. So it's going to be a little bit looser of a half double crochet. This can be called a long half double crochet because you're actually pulling your loop up to the level of the row that you're currently on. Then you're completing it. So that half double crochet actually goes into two rounds before. Now we're going to continue on and work a double crochet into this first single crochet after at the corner. So double crochet. A treble into the next stitch. So this will feel a little awkward, but this is how our corner is going to happen. So wrap the yarn twice around the hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. That's a treble stitch. Now you want to work a treble in the next stitch. So again, yarn around twice, go to the next stitch and work your treble. Now you want to chain one. We're going to work another treble into this same stitch. So our corner is happening in this stitch. So there's going to be a lot going on here. After a chain one, we'll work another treble into this same stitch. So work that treble and then a chain one. Now we want to work two more trebles into this same stitch. So yarn around twice into that stitch again for a treble and again yarn around twice and another treble into this stitch. So you have four trebles worked into this one stitch with two of these chain ones worked in here as well. That's our corner. And it's a little bit of a lopsided corner because we need more of it on this side than on this side because we need more stitches on this side. Now another treble but into the next stitch. And now we're going to start to work down in height. Double crochet. Double crochet. A half double crochet and another half double crochet and a single crochet into the next one. Now we've come across another corner at which again we did not work the chain two before. We're going to do another half double crochet into that. So half double crochet, yarn around your hook, Go into the green rounds, chain two space, pull up a loop and pull it up a little bit more than you might normally, and then yarn around and pull through all three. So we are halfway down the side of our square and we're going to do exactly what we just did here, but in the reverse order. Single crochet in the next single crochet stitch and then half double crochet, another half double crochet, oops, make sure I go through the right loops, a double crochet, and another double crochet. And now we're coming back up to our corner here soon. A treble. I was starting to get repetitive with the next stitch, so just know that if I don't say it, that you're always working into the next stitch unless I say otherwise. And now we're ready to work our corner right in here. So in reverse order, we want to do two trebles into that stitch. 
a chain one, another treble into that same stitch, a chain one, and another treble into the same stitch. That's our corner. We've worked another corner. So the corners seem to fall in weird places, but they will make sense once we see the entire piece laid out. Continuing it on, we want to do another treble in the next stitch. Then a half double crochet. And we've come up to our chain corner again. Now work a half double crochet into the green chain two space. So you're going two rounds below. Pull up your loop a little bit so it's a little bit even with this round and then pull through all three. So you're always working when you hit these corners, you're always working a half double crochet into the green round, not the white round. Now we're back up here and we're just going to work straight across this edge. So we want to work a single crochet in the next single crochet after that corner and then keep working across these single crochets so there'll be nine total including the one we just did. So this single crochet and then eight more until we get to the next chain space. So uh, let's see here. Don't lose track of where I am. I think this is the last one so let me go back and count. From this half double crochet I worked, I should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now I'm back to the corner again, this chain two space for the white. We skip over that and work down into the green one and we do a half double crochet. So you can see here when I insert the hook, I'm actually working over both those chain twos. Yarn over, bring it up and both those chain twos get caught into this stitch and then we pull through. So now we have to work across this, these two edges, we have to square them out as well. Next will be a double crochet. Then a treble. And now we're at the corner, so I need to work a treble stitch, a chain one, a treble into the same stitch, a chain one, and two trebles again into that same stitch. And that makes our corner. Now we're going to work a treble into the next stitch, a double crochet, another double crochet, then a half double crochet, another half double crochet, and a single crochet into the next one and we come back to our chain spaces. We're going to work a half double crochet down into that green chain two space. Pull your loop up a little bit more than normal to make it level and then pull through all three for your half double crochet. Now we're going to work back across in the reverse order of what we just did here. Single crochet in the next stitch, half double crochet, another half double crochet, a double crochet and another double crochet. Now we want to do a treble and now we're back to our corner, almost done our complete round here. So the corner is a treble in the next stitch and another treble into that same stitch, chain one, treble in the same stitch, chain one, treble into that same stitch again, 
treble into the next stitch, a double crochet, we're back to our chain two space here. We do a half double crochet into the green, pulling it up, pull through all of them, and we are back to the beginning of the round. And at this point, I can slip stitch or I can work an invisible join here. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch so we can take a look at this without cutting my yarn yet, although I will be. Let's take a look at what we just did. So I got a measuring tape here so we can see, night big numbers, it's eight inches across and it's eight inches this way as well, give or take, because it's not lying perfectly flat. But you get the idea. It is now a square. Every edge has the same number of stitches to the corner. The corner is the center treble in between the two chain spaces. That's how you tell where the corners are because on the next round we need to know where the corners are, but we have a nice squared out hexagon. That was the trickiest row of them all. So this is basically your square and from here on in we're just going to border it. So the next uh, two to three rounds are just going to be straight single crochet border. Now the next round I'm going to go back to this nice soft green. So let's take a look here at the piece that's finished. We're just going to do this nice soft green right here. And that's going to give this a nice firm border. These, this extra border, this can be done on any square, but it really adds it nicely to this one. So we're going to take our nice light green and we're going to join in a corner. So we have to find a corner first. The treble that is in between the two chain spaces, that's your corner stitch. And that's the stitch we want to work into. So you can pick any one of the four. So just pick one and it's the treble in between the two chain spaces. Go right into that treble stitch. I'm going to start with a standing single crochet and work it into that treble stitch. That's the first half of a corner that's going to be a single crochet chain to single crochet corner. So this is where we're starting. We're going to work our way across our first edge. So single crochet into the chain space. And now you're going to single crochet in every stitch across the top, including the chain space on the other side. So let's go ahead and do straight single crochet across the edge. And this is nice with this border. Now you're just kind of firming up the fact that it's a square. So once you add one or two rounds of these single crochets, it really squares it out nicely and makes it sit nicely. So we've reached the other chain space on the opposite side right before the treble. Work into that chain space. So how many single crochets do we have? Let's count them. Uh, not not counting the one that was actually in the treble that we started with. You start with the chain space one. You'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. So that's nineteen stitches in between the corner single crochet chain two single crochets. And you will have nineteen down each of these sides. So the corner we will work. We just did our chain space here. You want to go into that treble and do a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet back into that treble. And that's your corner. Now starting in this chain space, single crochet, and single crochet all the way across until you get to the chain space here before the treble. You will have 19 single crochet again. Then you work your corner single crochet, chain two single crochet into that treble. And then you start again, chain space right here, work across. So you will have 19 single crochets, not including the corners. And then you have corners of single crochet, chain two single crochet. So work all the way around your border. I'll meet you back here 
to join our round. We've worked our way all the way around. We've come back to the final corner where we started. I did. I ended by working the single crochet in that chain space before the treble. Now I want to go back into the same treble I started with and do a single crochet and a chain two. That's the last part of the corner. Now we're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet and that will complete that round. So I'm going to cut my yarn because I'm done with that green and you can see what we finished here. Let's take a look. I've gone all the way around in that light green. Now you can do as many rounds of that single crochet as you want. It's the same thing. You just work uh, your corners right here into these chain two spaces. You'll work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet again, and you'll just work single crochets across the rest of the stitches and you can continue your borders that way. You can do as many of the single crochet as you want. You can complete your square here, or you can add a few rounds of the colors back into the border. So you get something that looks a little bit like this version where I have four rounds of single crochet added onto the square itself. And that also lets you play around with the size of the square. If you remembered, we measured like an eight inch square. So now we're probably closer to an eight and a half inch. Probably one more round will make it a nine inch square. So if we go back and look at this one. I only did the one round of the green and then a round of the off white. And then I started into this little border. So go ahead and do one more round of the off white single crochet. And then I'll show you how I did this little colored border. And you can add as many rounds of that as you want as well. Now I've gone ahead and done one more round of this parchment color just to border it again exactly the same as the green. So it's all single crochets with your corner single crochet chain twos. Now I want to show you how I made this little border right here because it's kind of like a nice little fun. This is a great square to use for your projects. You can make blankets out of it. This little border just gives it that extra little panache and you can make a bunch of these and turn them into a blanket. It would be really beautiful for a little baby blanket. So let me show you how we put this rose color and made that little fancy border. So what I want to do is work from the wrong side. So I want to flip my work to the wrong side. And right now I have lots of ends because I didn't work any of them in. I want to go to the corner to a chain two corner. Any one of the chain two corners will work. And I want to work a single crochet into that chain two space. And we're going to work across our edge and we're going to work half double crochets and slip stitches. So the next stitch we're going to do, which will be the first stitch beside the chain space, will be a half double crochet. And then we want to do a slip stitch. And that's it all the way around. So half double crochet in the next stitch and a slip stitch, which is just insert your hook. You're not wrapping the yarn around at all until you get it to the through the stitch. Then you pull up a loop and pull it through the one on the hook. That's your slip stitch, just as if you were joining. So half double crochet in the next stitch, slip stitch in the next stitch half double crochet, not too tight, and a slip stitch. It's easy to pull too tight when you're doing slip stitches, so just don't pull too tight. Just relax and breathe, and you don't want to pull too tight or it will pucker the work. It doesn't really have the same effect if you pull it really tight. So try to work nice and gentle, not super loose, just gentle all the way across doing half double crochets and slip stitches. Each stitch gets half double crochet, next stitch, slip stitch, one in each stitch all the way across until you get to the corner. So we're almost at the corner. Half double crochet, slip stitch, and half double crochet. Now because of the number of stitches I believe we have, uh, it works out, but even if it doesn't work out, you always do the corners as a single crochet. See, I'm back to the corner, so I work into this chain two space, single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. That's how I'm working my corners, even on this side. Next stitch we go into will be a half double crochet, 
next stitch will be a slip stitch and we do exactly the same thing as we just did all the way across until we get to the next corner. So let's flip this over and just take a look at what we've done. So see how it's creating this nice little delicately, it's almost like a, a scallop or a shell edging. So you're going to do this all the way around until you get back to where we started here. And then we join the same way as we did before with finishing our corner and slip stitching to end. Keep working like this and I'll meet you back at this corner and we'll take a look at what we've done. We've worked all the way around. We're back to the corner that we started at. I have a half double crochet here as my last stitch. Then I work a single crochet in the same chain two space we joined in. Chain two, slip stitch in that first single crochet. I'm done with this color, so I'm cutting it. Pull it through and now let's flip it over and you can see I've done this nice edging all the way around. So let's go back and take a look at how you can complete this. This is the finished one. This one we've done all the way to this rose colored edging. You could end your square here and just use it like this or you can continue and do a few more of these. So what I did on the next round is just straight single crochet like I did on the round before. This white round here, you would do that again. Join in a corner on the right side and work single crochets, making sure your corners have the chain twos all the way around. And then you would flip it to the wrong side again and you can add another color. So you could do the green the same way we just did this pink. So you would be working half double crochet slip stitches all the way around from the wrong side. You have to work from the wrong side so you get this nice texture on the right side. Then I flipped it around again. So I was working right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. And I did another round of off white. Then I flipped it and continued with the off white in the, in obviously the reverse direction. And I did a round of the half double crochet slip stitch from the wrong side just to give it this nice scalloped edging kind of a finished off. And that's how I left it. That was the last round that I did. I don't do another single crochet after that. And it, it gives this nice little, it almost looks like a, a pico or a shell edging without having to do the shells. And that is how I got this border. See, much simpler than you'd think, right? Not as complicated as it looks. That's the nice thing with crochet. Sometimes things look complicated and they're so easy. So there you go. You have your finished square and it's a nice big one with a really pretty flower. And that completes the Sage Granny Square. This one's a nice large square, so it won't take too many of them to make a nice throw. I think these nice pinks and greens are going to end up being a baby blanket. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you in the next tutorial.